In today's video guys, I'm going to show you the best NVIDIA control panel settings for gaming in 2023 to actually make sure that you guys get the maximum amount of FPS and the least amount of input delay while playing your favorite games like Warzone 2.0, MW2, Valorant, basically applies for anything guys. It just will overall make sure that you get better colors, a more responsive picture and the best in-game advantages possible. If this video was helpful, please don't forget to subscribe. That's the easiest way to support the channel. And now I'm going to guide you through it step by step, which options you really need to focus on and which are super irrelevant. So therefore, let's get straight into it. And yeah guys, once you're now going to take a look at the best NVIDIA control panel settings, what I want you to do is open up your NVIDIA control panel, which you can just simply do here in the search bar, you know, just simply tap in the NVIDIA, then you get it. And then we go to manage 3D settings. And in the first place, what I want to mention is image scaling, guys. This is a super complicated feature because not all the games support it right now. And I would really say if you're trying to play any of the newer AAA titles, something like Warzone 2.0, MW2, I really wouldn't recommend it as of right now. Usually this is a great feature for already like established games. Let's just say as an example that you're playing maybe on something like 1280 times 720 which would be normal HD you can use image scaling to actually upscale it to make it look like 1080p like normal 1920 times 1080 but you still get a nice FPS increase because it's only upscaled you know it's not native 1080 but as mentioned as of right now I really can't recommend you to use this because it's so buggy in newer games and I think a lot of people are probably gonna watch this because of Warzone 2.0 so therefore we're gonna keep it off ambient occlusion guys basically affects your lighting in games making like light a little bit more softer you know what i'm saying and reflections a little bit more realistic so therefore i don't really care about it i want to get a competitive advantage and therefore make some fps keep it off guys anti-strophic filtering this is now also like another point which i have here actually off this only really affects like objects in the distance you know when you have like edges and they're not as sharp maybe this is sometimes when you need like anti-strophic filtering in order to upscale it a little bit the same way with all of these like anti-aliasing options guys i have them all turned off everything except gamma correction which is again basically how your game is going to look like you know your colors which i don't really want to change too much because i don't want it to look like really bad but everything which has something to do with anti-strophic filtering or anti-aliasing i really would only turn off because i only care about the best performance and if you guys are struggling with hyping in modern warfare 2 or warzone or your favorite game in general or you have super high input delay guys i can only recommend you no ping no ping is an amazing tool which you can utilize and you can see you can basically select for over 1000 supported games the server in your near with the least amount of ping on top of that you can also go in the settings and and enable this turbo games mode which will give you less input delay on your keyboard we also have an fps boost feature with some of the best tweaks you can apply possibly to your pc and they're all tested and safe you can just simply apply them while clicking onto them no ping will cost you exactly five bucks per month guys but with my code in the description or better set my link you can get 20 percent extra off i know it says hashtag ad guys in the corner but i personally use this every time before i actually hop into warzone or mw2 because it helps me to get less ping and all that stuff guys they have a bunch of different payment methods guys but they have also paypal here by the way yeah you have to click onto this it's kind of hidden i don't know why but you have paypal as well you can just simply type it in there and yeah you can pay as well via paypal and as mentioned they support over 1000 games so therefore make sure to check it out out with the link in the description and actually get yourself lower ping less input delay and better fps then for this next step guys we now have your background application max frame rate and this is also a super interesting feature because let's just say as an example that you maybe have your google chrome running in the background to listen to music or your discord whatever you can actually put a fps limiter on that therefore actually putting less work on your gpu which if you really need it is a cool feature i personally don't really care too much about it so definitely gonna keep it off CUDA gpus you're gonna leave on all just simply guys this is just like selecting the right gpu on your pc and then for the DSR factor, I keep it on 4x, my DSR smoothness on 33% and my low latency mode on on. And especially with the low latency mode, a lot of pro players say they don't really feel a difference using it. Some say, yo, on feels better than ultra. And I have to say from my personal experience, guys, this low latency mode on ultra gives me the least amount of input delay in games. So therefore, this is again, personal preference. You have to hop in game and really try it out for yourself, guys. Other than that, I can't give you any tips on that. For the maximum frame rate cap, guys, it only makes sense if you have unstable fps let me give you an example let's just say that you're playing with average like 120 fps but sometimes if you look into the sky or there's like a super undetailed picture or there's like a super undetailed part of a map you know your fps go up to 180 this is going to cause additional heat for your gpu because it's producing so much more pictures than you maybe need let's just say that you're playing on 120 hertz you know so therefore what this actually does is let's just say as an example that if you are around like these 120 fps and you sometimes have these spikes up above like crazy above guys this can cause overheating on your gpu which can cause thermal throttling which can overall cause fps stutter or even more unstable fps so therefore if your fps counter is really wobbly this makes kind of sense to set yourself a decent max frame rate other than that i really wouldn't touch it 
Of course, for your monitor technology, guys, I keep it here on G-Sync compatible because my monitor actually supports G-Sync. But yeah, I don't really utilize it too much. And most of the times you can also set it up in game. So you don't have to worry about it. Multi-frame sample double AA, guys. This is right now again off. This again, something like making image a little bit more sharper. But again, we're trying to go for a competitive advantage. If you're trying to, of course, play on something like a 2K, 4K display, you might consider turning all these on, guys, which I just mentioned previously. But as of right now, for like Warzone 2.0, we can actually put it off, guys. Open GL. I just simply wouldn't touch guys this just simply leave over to Windows. This is always the best. And power management mode, we of course gotta put to prefer maximum performance, guys. Super important. And for the preferred refresh rate, we also gotta put it to the highest available. For me, right now on my monitor, it's 360 hertz and it's automatically gonna select the highest hertz available on your PC. Shader cache size, guys, I keep on five gigabytes. This works the best with Windows 10 and Windows 11 proven, which basically means if these five gigabytes get like filled up, the shader cache is gonna get automatically clean and you just simply have fresh shader cache, which can also fix a lot of issues for people. Texture filtering, guys, you can see that I have everything basically on the lowest or high performance, you know, everything besides negative LOD bears, which I keep here stock on allow, guys. And therefore, again, this is to make the picture look a little bit nicer. But yeah, I don't really care about it. I just want to go for maximum FPS. So therefore, I got to put it to off and everything the lowest. Threaded optimization, you got to keep on auto, guys. Triple buffering, you got to keep on off. Vertical sync as well. I really would say vertical sync doesn't make sense if you have anything running above 75 hertz, guys. Yeah, if you're playing on a one 120, 144, uh, even higher hertz display. Vertical sync does make no difference whatsoever. But on lower hertz panels, something like 60, 75 hertz, some people say that the picture is a little bit smoother. So therefore, you have to try it out for yourself or basically know, okay, do I have a 144 hertz monitor? Then don't touch it. And for the rest, virtual reality and Vulkan, we don't have to care about it, guys. So therefore, these are all the best NVIDIA control panel settings. Now just simply click on to apply. For the rest of the settings, guys, we're now gonna go over here to change resolution and really make sure that you select your native resolution under PC guys none of the other ones here because sometimes people go on ultra hd and they wonder why can i put it on the maximum refresh rate well that is the point behind it guys yeah and then always make sure that you select your highest one for me as mentioned it's 360 hertz and we're gonna go as well over here now to adjust desktop color settings and what is basically the magic behind making your game super colorful and vibrant is putting your digital vibrance to 50 percent besides that you're gonna leave everything else on stock guys as you can see here we have brightness on 50 contrast on 50 gamma on 0.80 and hoe on zero but then we're gonna go additionally as well here into adjust video color settings and there you gotta put your saturation on something between 75 and 80 percent if you put it on anything higher than that guys it's gonna become like too vibrant to a point where it just gets like orange and red you know what i'm saying so therefore really 75 to 80 percent for your saturation is the best setting and then we just simply gonna apply it again and you're already done here with the best nvidia control panel settings for gaming in 2023